So now I want to explain the difference between voting in a world without party labels versus voting in a world with party labels. As I said in the notes, when citizens vote in a world without party labels, they're forced to make multiple binary choices and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy. And the reason that it does is because each of the decisions they have to make is independent of the other decisions they have to make. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm going to have, we're get, as you can see on the screen, there's an election here and citizens are going to be voting for governor, senator, member of the house, a mayor and a city council member. Now, this is a world without party labels, but I have to designate the different candidates. I used to do candidate one and candidate two for the governor, candidate one and two for the Senate, candidate one and two for the House and so on. But I realized that students started to think that candidate one in each of these different races was of the same party and candidate two was of the same party. I was like, no, there are no party labels. And then I would do candidate A and B and C and D and E and F, but they started doing the same thing. Candidate e assumed candidate A and candidate C and candidate E were all in the same party. So I came up with this approach. It's kind of silly, but I think it makes the point. So our citizen is getting ready to vote in this election. First, they have to vote for governor. And their choice is between candidate fishbowl and candidate windmill. Now, I don't know what policies are associated with fishbowl or windmill, but that's the point. There are no party labels. So in order for this citizen to figure out who to vote for, they're gonna to have to do some research. Governor's a pretty important decision. So let's say they decide to do two hours of research and ultimately they decide voting for candidate Fishbowl. Good job, good citizen. Now it's time to vote for the Senate. Now in this election, their choice is between candidate Rubber Ducky and candidate Blue Inner Tube. Now this has nothing to do with Fishbowl and windmills, which is exactly the point. The research that they did to decide how to vote for governor, those two hours that they spent figuring out that they preferred candidate Fishbowl to candidate Windmill, it's not gonna help them figure out who to vote for the Senate. And so they have to decide how much time am I gonna, am I gonna spend doing research for the Senate? And the Senate's pretty important. And so they decide they're gonna spend two hours and they decide to vote for candidate Blue Inner Tube. Now it's time to vote for the House. Now, once again, this is going to be an independent decision because now they put in four hours of research, but who's running for office? It's candidate Crab and candidate Crown. They decide it's going to be another hour of research, but the research that they have to do is because the research they did for the Senate, the research they did for the governor isn't going to help them. This is an independent decision. And so now they've put in five hours. They decide I'm going to vote for candidate Crab. Now they have to vote for mayor. They're getting a little bit tired. They're trying to figure out, do they want to vote for candidate shopping cart or candidate barcode? After they put their half hour in, now they're up to five and a half hours of um, research. And they decide to vote for candidate shopping cart. And now it's time to vote for city council. In this case, it's between candidate flashlight and candidate basket. They put another half hour, they put in a total of six hours of research. They voted for candidate basket. Each of the decisions they made was independent of the other. Once again, the research that they did for the governorship didn't help them decide the Senate. The research they did for the Senate didn't help them decide the House or the mayorship or the city council. All these decisions were independent. This is what voting is like in a world without party labels. And in the next election, all the research they did in this election isn't going to help them. They're going to have to start all over again. 
unless maybe these same candidates run again, but if the same candidates don't run again, they're back to square one. This is what makes voting in a world without party labels so difficult. You have to make multiple binary decisions. A binary decision is a choice between two things. Well, voting in a world with party labels is much easier. Why is that? As I said before, what the Republican Party has done and what the Democratic Party has done is they've created these bundles of issues. Issues that the Republican Party stands for, issues that the Democratic Party stands for. Now, it's not the case that every single Republican believes everything in the Republican bundle. It's not the case that everybody in the Democratic Party believes everything in the Democratic bundle. But for the most part, it's a pretty good guess that a Republican candidate supports the Republican bundle and the Democratic Party, the Democratic candidate votes in the Democratic bundle and supports those issues. So the same citizen who just voted in a world without party labels, what would he, how would he approach this election in a world with party labels? Well, let's say the voter decides, I'm gonna spend three hours doing some research. I'm gonna look up the Republican bundle, spend an hour and a half figuring out what the Republican bundle is. I'm gonna spend an hour and a half looking at what the Democratic bundle is to see if I have a preference of one over the other. Now, if, if this person does research and they don't have a preference one or the other, they like an equal number of things and dislike an equal number of things in, a, in, in each of the bundles, they're basically voting in a world without party labels. They're going to have to make each of their decisions independently. But let's say this particular citizen's done his research and decided he likes a Democratic bundle. Well, what happens? There's an election coming up. And these are the candidates for governorship, for the Senate, for the House, the mayor, the city council. There's a Democratic candidate and there's a Republican candidate. How hard is it going to be for this citizen to vote? Not at all. Because they put in the three hours research, they decided they liked the Democratic bundle more. And so when they look at this ballot, it's easy. They just vote for all the Democrats. Just go down the ballot, look for the Democrat, clink, 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 done. Voting in a world with party labels, if you have a preference for the Democratic or Republican bundle, makes voting very, very easy. But it's even better than that. Let's assume that this election was the election in 2022. Well, this person put in the three hours of research and they were able to vote very quickly in this um, election, but they're also going to be able to vote easily in the election in 2024 and in 2026 and in 2028 and in 2030. All they have to do is periodically make sure that the parties haven't changed their bundles, which they do sometimes, but not very often. But as long as they're monitoring things and making sure that the Democrats still believe in the Democratic bundle and the Republicans still believe in the Republican bundle, it winds up being very easy to vote in a world with party labels if a citizen has a preference for one bundle over the other. Citizens who don't have a preference are basically voting in a world without party labels, which is what makes it so difficult. Now, a lot of younger voters find themselves in this exact position. They don't necessarily have a strong preference for the Republicans or the Democrats. And so simply knowing that somebody's a Democrat or a Republican doesn't give them enough information to figure out how to vote. They are essentially voting in a world without party labels. And I suspect that that's a lot of the reason that younger people opt out of voting. They wait until maybe they have a preference and then they start voting. But I would suggest to you that it's really important for young people to vote. And so it's worth spending the time 
looking at the Republican bundle and looking at the Democratic bundle to figure out which one you prefer. Now, if you don't prefer one over the other, then you're living in a world and voting in a world without party labels, and it's going to be difficult. I would still say it's worth it because the more people who participate, the better our democracy functions. Now, if these part of the lecture notes didn't make sense before, hopefully having watched that, the earlier part of this video, this will make sense. Party labels act as information shortcuts, right? They give you an idea of what somebody believes just by knowing that they're a Democrat or a Republican. A Democrat, you can assume, agrees with most of the Democratic bundle, whatever those issues are. If somebody's a Republican, you can assume it means that they agree with most of the Republican bundle. You don't have to research them. You don't have to find out about the individual candidates. You do in a primary, in a primary election where everybody has a D or everybody has an R, that's a different story. Then the party labels don't help. But in a general election, party labels function as a information shortcut. In a world where you're voting without party labels, where Democrat and Republican really doesn't mean anything to you because maybe you agree with aspects of both bundles, then each time you vote, you're faced with multiple binary choices. Am I going to vote for this person or that person? Am I going to vote for this person or that person? Right? Or even worse, multiple people. And this requires a lot of time and a lot of energy. Voting with party labels, right? Again, I'm not talking about primaries because everybody has the same uh, party label in most primaries. Like in California, we have the jungle primary. So people with different party labels can be on the same ballot. But if you're a Democrat, you're still going to have to find out which Democrat you want to vote for. But in a, in a general election, when you're voting with party labels, you're just faced with one bar binary choice, the Republican bundle or the Democratic bundle. That requires way less time and way less energy and most importantly, it not only makes it possible you, for you to vote in the upcoming election, but in the next election and the next election and the next election. And this is why I started off by saying that part, political parties make it easier for some citizens to vote. Not everybody, but for some citizens, if you've decided that you agree with one of those bundles, voting in a general election is very easy to do. I hope that made sense. If not, ask questions on the political science, the political science, the ideology and political parties discussion board. I hope that was helpful.